going to say that Jeffrey Dahmer's conversion was sincere, then he is saved despite how we view his sins. I, I just I just typed Jeffrey Dahmer Christian into uh, Google, and the first things came up. There's a, there's a reference on the Christian Chronicle. There's a reference on Wikipedia. So so I, I verified the information. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to wrap up. What are these? What's the summary and the implications? The first one. Um, if you're watching the show The Good Place, you know, don't take your spiritual knowledge from things that you see in the world or in the media. It's not really a it's not really a good place to get your to get your, uh, your spiritual knowledge. So you want to go to the real source. Uh, so if I said, what is the real source? Okay, so since we're in church, the obvious answer is either God or Jesus or the Bible. Okay, in this case, the Bible. This is where you're going to find your, your, your spiritual knowledge. Um, the next implication is, no matter how good you are trying to be, you're not going to be good enough to get into heaven. There's no such thing as being good enough. Only Christ has done it. So that's something Satan uses to place into our lives to think that, that we can somehow be good enough to be worthy of salvation. And that's just like what Paul was trying to do. You know, old Paul was trying to be worthy of salvation. New Paul figured out that that was not the case. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that the only way to do it would be through Jesus. Okay, so let's look at Dahmer's story. Dahmer's story shows us that God can forgive all sins. Notice I capitalized all. Think about the things that Jeffrey Dahmer would be forgiven of. If you think that you have sins in your life that cannot be forgiven, look at Jeffrey Dahmer. You can be forgiven of everything. Okay? And Christ, that forgiveness through Christ is what makes us good enough. We're not good enough of ourselves. We're good enough because God, because Christ makes us good enough. Okay? Okay, so... This could be a tough pill for us in the church to swallow, right? Because remember that list that I put up of the serial killers, the rapists, you know, the, 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 the murderers, all the pedophiles, right? Um, if somebody with those sins comes into our midst and, and wants to be saved, is, is asking to be baptized, is, is willing to change their lives and be transformed, then, then we have to swallow that pill and we have to get beyond it and, and have faith that God is going to take care of of us take care of them. Okay? So the last thing I wanted to remember is we need to be able to rejoice. Okay? All of our sins have been forgiven. If you've been up here and you've, uh, you've repented and you've confessed your sins and you've been baptized, then all of your sins are forgiven and your destiny is to be with God after this life is over. That is something to rejoice of no matter what our circumstances are in the present time and the present So that's the, that's the sermon for today. Uh, we're going to sing a song of encouragement. And if you have something that you'd like to share with the church that we can pray about, um, I'll be happy to listen to you up front um, as we stand and sing our invitation song. Thank you. <coughs> I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad.
leaving the paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, foes may beset me, still will I enter in. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad.